Well in this video I'm going to run through doing the rush seating for an old wooden chair. I haven't done rush seating before but I've got some very helpful Bodger friends, uh, one in particular, who's going to help me and show me the ropes. So let's see how it goes. This um, rush I've got here is English freshwater reed rush and grows in rivers. It's harvested on a two-year cycle. So um, it's quite tall. It's a couple of metres tall, something like that. Anyway, that's what I'm using. It's been soaked to make it nice and supple. Here's the chair I'm going to be rushing. At the moment it's covered with seagrass. And it's okay, but the seagrass on there is quite loose now and it gaps, as you can see. So to give it a nice rush seat will actually be quite a nice, and it'd be a bit more authentic for the chair. So the first thing one needs to do is get the old seagrass off, and I'm using a little hacksaw here just to actually get get it off. That's the chair with the seat removed, so now that's ready for rushing. And the first step, because the chair isn't square, is to actually mark on in pencil, and you can see where my finger is now, just little marks to correspond with the back width. So what I need to do first of all is fill in that area to get a perfect square. So I'm just going to be putting rush essentially around the front corners of the chair. So the string ties the rush to the side of the chair and that's just temporarily there. That corner's now padded, so that's ready. Just going to show you how one can join pieces of rush. A lot of the books say, oh, do, do proper knots to join your rush. And I have it on very good authority, but that's not actually necessary. And I have to say, I totally agree when I see how this is coming along really quite firmly. All you do is you have your piece of rush that you want to join. So I'm putting it behind, I'm folding it over like that, and then just doing, it's like a sort of little half hitch knot. And that's enough to just keep that tight enough holding there. It will get packed in by other pieces of rush all around it. So once that happens, it won't come undone. And these other knots I've done are perfectly strong. So there you are, it's just a, a little tip, but quite a good one. I'll just join another bit of rush and actually I'm going to zoom the camera in give you a closer view. So let's, let's, yeah, I'll put my hand underneath. So I've got the piece I want to join which I've just put behind that bit of loose rush. I'm bending it over like that and then just doing that bending it back and there you are that's all it needs so let me just show you that once again so I've been doing this on the chair and it seems to be working absolutely fine so that's the piece I want to join some rush onto that I've got a piece of rush here I'm going to join to it it's behind it bend it over and then bring it back round so that it puts a bit of pressure just to hold that little slip. And that's all there is to it. You can then go ahead and twist for the next piece. I'm just gonna show you how one twists the rush. I've got two bits of rush here. And the idea is you twist away from the corner. So at the moment, I'm at this corner and I'm twisting away like that. And the idea is to get all your bits of rush, your actual twists, the same. So you can slightly increase or decrease the tension on your twist to try and get them all nicely matching up so you don't have really a really thin one in a row next to a really fat one. I mean, ideally, get all your rushes of similar sort of thickness. Not always possible, <laughs> as nature doesn't always grow things as we like. So I mean that's the idea there, so that then goes underneath. I've twisted on top, I say away from the corner, I'm pulling it quite taut, bending it under, it then reappears back through the middle and I'm going to bring it this way. Now again that's my corner, I'm twisting away from my corner. I'm 
twisting the rush. See, my hand is going away from the corner as I twist. I'm not twisting towards the corner that way, I'm twisting that way, away from that corner. And that is the case at each corner, you just twist away from the corner. Oh, so what I've been told, so this is what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm probably, if you're a very experienced rusher, you're probably looking at this and thinking, well, it's not got that right. <sighs> there you are, I just want to show you, so if you want to have a go, you feel you can and keep it nice and tight on the sides there. So that goes under. And then you repeat exactly the same procedure over on the next corner, over there. Okay, so I'll bring this round. That's our corner again, but um, same sort of idea. So this over, I'll try and keep my hands so you can see them. So that's the bit I'm adding over like that. And it just sort of holds itself. It doesn't look strong and you think it's going to just fall out, but it does hold it there. Here we are, lip read just like that. You see that, how I'm doing it? And then just twist it, as I say, away from the corner. So I tuck that join piece down there and I twist away again. It's interesting actually watching some of my bodger friends, by, by bodgers by the way, in case you're wondering, what on earth is this bodger term he keeps using? I'm talking about, um, there used to be sort of itinerant woodsmen who used to turn chair legs on pole laves in the woods and they were called bodgers. Highly skilled actually, but um, they weren't regarded as such. But my bodger friends, the people who make chairs etc out of green timber, out of wet timber from trees. And so we, we organised this little go at doing some rush making, got a very kind lady to help us. So again, turned under, keep it nice and tight. And then I come back this way and repeat the same thing again. I think I might add in another rush if I've got a loose bit. If you've got any loose bits, you can just tuck them in. It sort of thickens up the seat, so there's a bit of padding. And in fact, if you get all your loose bits and just stuff them into bits as you go along, you probably won't need any separate padding on your seat. Here, if I'm being critical, that corner there is a little bit loose. I need to just tighten it a bit more. So you can do a certain amount of pushing it with your finger. Some people use a little rounded bit of wooden stick. This isn't quite rounded enough. I'm just showing you the principle here to sort of keep things nice and tight. You want these as tight as you can get them. The rush is damp so it will dry and it will shrink and it will make the seat tighter. And I believe some people actually use the seats for a day or two <laughs> just to mature them as they're sort of drying and um, get some nicely bedded in. So I'll add another piece in here, but it's, again, it's the same principle as before. So if I show you, that's the corner, you turn away from the corner. Okay, so I'm not turning, as I say, that way. I hope that's, you can see that on the camera. I'm turning away from the corner the whole time. That will go over, and you, you carry on the weave. So that's gonna go over that front. It will then come up through the center again, go over the back rail of the chair. It will then come back up through the centre, come over this rail, and you just repeat that pattern going in and into the centre. So I'll carry on doing a few more. I mean, to do a chair takes even someone who's far more experienced than myself, it probably takes them getting on for a day. So it's, it's not a quick job by any means. I think people, when they think about having chairs re really rushed, don't realise actually that the cost of labour and actually even the rush these days is pretty heavy. So I mean UK pounds we're probably looking at something like to have a chair rushed 70 pound a square foot of chair seat. So it's quite a bit but I mean if you've got a nice antique chair it's obviously well worth doing. So I'm just twisting this, twisting as always away from the corner, wrapping it under, 
trying to keep it tight on those corners. Up it comes. Now I should probably actually think about putting another bit of rush on. Some of the rush is quite muddy because it's obviously being picked as it grows. It's harvested and its base is growing in the water. I just tuck down these little loose bits and they can act as a bit more padding for the chair. Again, twisting away from the corner. I'm getting a bit of a cycle for this now, but I have to say when I was first doing it, I was making quite a lot of mistakes. position down as much as I can. I think looking at this chair, if I was doing this again, I would have slightly have taken this rather hard, sharp edge off, because I think that's going to make the rush wear in time. I would have rounded that a bit more. Certainly if I was making my own chair, I'd draw a knife it a bit more on these edges. This chair actually had some evidence of nails in the front. And I think the original maker had actually put a little wooden sort of splat all along the front and that would have protected the chair a bit more. So just to illustrate what I mean, this is obviously far too thick, but there's a very thin sliver of wood just tacked along the front that acted as a little buffer to protect that front edge. So again, underneath, I'm trying to tuck it in to keep the tension quite, quite high, not, not to let it get too loose. And again, twisting away, trying to get it straight. I did notice actually, I transported these rushes in my car and I folded them, well not folded, I placed them over the back seats and um, they got a little bit sort of kinked in some of them and actually the, the moral from that one is if I'm storing them it's really is worthwhile keeping them dead straight and another time I'd wrap them in the tarpaulin roll them up you know there's a long length to give them a bit of solid strength. Drying the rushes uh, one, one doesn't want to apparently have them standing up on end too much simply because they can all bend over and it's better to try and keep them a bit more sort of, you know, stored in a sort of flatter position if possible. Obviously they've got to be dried once they've been harvested, so that does mean a lot of turning around. Some of these are quite muddy on the base, so I am trimming off a bit, which probably could more that could be used as packing, but I have got quite a bit here, so I'd rather at the moment make sure I've got it right. So that one's coming down. Apparently the sort of old Victorian rush chair makers, what I've been told, may well have managed to get up to two chairs done in a day, but I think that was really going it and probably not very large chairs at that. So, um, I mean, this has taken me so far, probably four or five hours. Now, obviously I'm learning on this, it does let you see that it's not fast even if you do know exactly what you're doing. So we're getting there, I'll keep on and um, there's not too much more. It's worth trying to keep it packed in so it doesn't get too loose on the, on the edges. So every now and again I give it a push in and I give is a push on the corners just to get them nicely even embedded in. Here's the finished chair, so it seems to have gone very well all in all. Give you close up the seat. There we are. Probably get it a bit smoother, but it's not bad. So that's given that nice little chair a new lease of life. Anyway, I hope the video has given you some thoughts on how one can approach rush work and perhaps you have a go yourself. As I say, I don't proclaim to be an expert, so this is my first attempt. 
but um, I'm pleased actually. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it.